Oh, hey there. So in this week's video, we're going to be going over the build, rebuild, of my Tronxy X5SA that's been showed previously in the channel. Uh, I'll be doing things including linear rails, direct drive, uh, Bontech clone V6 with a volcano hot end, uh, amongst a few other things including sensorless homing. Uh, I really hope you enjoy the build process uh, as as much as I have, and uh, I'm pretty excited to see how it all turns out. All right, let's get started. About to start the overhaul on the X5SA. Gonna do a complete teardown at the top end. Um, I might, I believe when I assembled it, one of the vertical beams was about two millimeters off, so I'm gonna see if I can figure out which one it was. And then I'm just gonna print some shims to match the other three. That way I don't worry about cutting anything. Um, everything down at the bottom is fine. I've already overhauled that before, all new electronics and everything. Um, so I'm going to get rid of the rollers and everything. I have this linear rail. It's going to go here. I'm going to move the Bontech over to make it a direct drive again. Uh, don't like the other one. And we're going to use that. Here's the, the V6 cooling duct. Um, I also have two of these shorter rails that are going to go on this side. Um, and I will take some photos to go through step by step as I'm doing it. Um, and then I'll show a short video at the end when it's all done. Hey everybody, we're going to go ahead and do a quick update real quick and show how much I've done so far and what we have left. It's probably about 95% done um, and by the end of the video it'll be done and should be printing. Okay, on the top here we have linear rails on both X and Y. Um, I designed these little spacers here. Um, originally they serve more of a purpose than do not honestly because I was going to keep the original uh, side mounting hardware. Um, and this was this little spacer was supposed to help keep the rails above the screws that were in that but I ended up just designing a new solution anyway I put um, aluminum pulleys on the side rails as well the back has some metal pulleys I do still need to order ones for the front these are still the original plastic ones um, nothing wrong with them I just ended up breaking a couple of them uh, when I was changing this out uh, hammer may or may not have missed and hit the plastic and it didn't like it very much. Uh, we have a top mounted spool solution. Instead of having to worry about tracking the filament all the way down from here on the side where it used to be. Um, I still have to do some wire management but we have the uh, dual drive Bontech clone dual blowers with, and you can't see it from here actually I'll pull it off. Uh, volcano style hot end it has a genuine um, all-metal throat for a mosquito hot end. 
It's got a 40 millimeter, 4010 uh, hot end cooler. Uh, I did design in these quick disconnects for the fans. That way I could just pull the whole shroud away uh, when I'm doing maintenance on it. Um, as of right now, it has the full size stepper. I may or may not go back and add a uh, pancake later on. And that's it for the hot end. Um, obviously it is in direct drive configuration. As far as the cable chain, um, I ended up putting these little risers on it just to keep it above because it was sagging and it was hitting the pulleys. So now that I added these risers, it's well enough above. Um, right now on the printer, the other printer, I am making a new Z limit switch holder to come up here. Um, I did end up gaining a few centimeters in height, probably about a centimeter or two in height uh, on the Z um, because this high end is definitely higher than the original. Um, and it ended up being higher than the bed was able to go. So normally these bars are mounted below. Um, I just swapped them and put them up, um, which kind of canceled out about a centimeter. Um, but now it's able to home all the way up to the top. Again, once the Z mount is Z switch mount is in place, um, I still have to remove this end stop. It doesn't actually function, as you see, it's disconnected. Um, Z end stop, or sorry, centralized homing does work. Um, that is due to in my control box. I have the SKR 1.3, and I've just got these. Uh, stepper drivers from Area 1 to test. They have the 2209 and they're quieter, they run cooler, and they have sensorless homing. It's kind of the best of all the worlds between all the different um, types of modern TMC drivers. They are wired up in standalone, just configured in standalone UART mode. Um, so I can control the trims with the firmware and or the LCD screen versus having to adjust the trim pots. Um, you can see I have, I did this a long time ago, but I have a buck converter going to a 12 volt fan um, because that's just what I had laying around um, to cool the steppers and the board. Um, and inside the case, you'll see here I have a breakout MOSFET board for the heated bed. Um, I did my best to attach. Um, these little mounting points for the wire management just so it's not covering the board and the stepper drivers too much just to make sure that it allows for enough cooling and real quick I'm going to go ahead and show you what changes I had to make to make the 2209s work in sensorless homing okay so as I showed in my previous 2209 review video and install video um, you have to set the pins here to UART for each one no pins underneath and then originally I had thought that you could just run them to these jumpers however the Airy one 2209s did not have the extra pin right here see if I can zoom in on top see those two holes next to that one pin well on a lot of other 2209s the pins already there so it would be able to interface right through um, that is not an option with these so you do still have to use one jumper wire going from the pin that's exposed up to the appropriate um, signal for the end stop. So it's going to be the leftmost wire if you're looking at it in this orientation for the minimum end stop. Go ahead and plug this one back in. Like so. And then at, other than that you have to make sure that you have stealth chop enabled and that you have your currents right. Go ahead and show you what I have on mine. Um, you're going to have to do some trial and error based on your configuration and your printer. But you go to configuration, advanced, scroll all the way down to TMC drivers, and you can see the current in here. So since I'm doing dual Z motors, I have that set a little higher. Everything else I just left at the stock 800, and it seems to be working great. Scroll down to sensorless homing. Right now I have uh, 75 and 80. I'm going to tweak it a little bit um, because you want it to be as low as possible without it tr false triggering. Um, but right now these numbers do work, so I'll play with that a little more later. 
and then you come here to the stepping mode and you can see that um, stealth chop is enabled for X and Y which is required for sensorless swimming. Um, Z and extruder I left it off and that's all you need to do to get your sensorless homing, sensorless homing working and a little bit of trial and error and you'll be good to go. Alright, so there's a quick rundown of what I've done so far. Once the Z mount is done printing, I'll be able to mount that and then all I have to do is re-level the bed, um, double check a few tuning settings and I should be ready to get back to the first print with sensorless homing, ultra quiet, 2209 and much cooler stepper drivers. Uh, linear rails and direct drive on this printer and I'm super excited to see the difference versus the original configuration. And uh, just I wanted to go ahead and show you something I just recently got. Um, up until now my soldering solution has either been this very cheap and very slow heating soldering iron. Um, there are no temperature settings, no adjustments and this one was so uh, lackluster that the only place you can really solder was like right here around the base and I usually end up using the screw as my soldering tip because the soldering tip just would not get hot enough with this one um, so finally the other night I had enough of it and I went ahead and ordered this um, actually very budget um, solder station I didn't expect much from it I think I paid $38 or something um, I'll post a link in the description but for what you get I really did not expect the quality um, it came with a pair of tweezers, it came with a very basic but functional solder sucker, just push this down and then push the button and it pulls the solder, right? As well as several spare tips, I haven't used these yet, and then they just sit in the holes in the trays back here so you can just store them there. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and show you real quick just how fast this thing heats up. So turn it on to 380, and you'll see it's just like climbing, and it's already up to temperature. And you can see, it's kind of hard to get it a hold here. Alright, sorry, I had to set the phone down so I can actually do it. Um, but yeah, you can see it is already to temperature, melting the solder no problem. Um, and that's just really impressive to me that literally in about 10 seconds, this thing is fully to temperature. You can see the solder on the tip is smoking. It's very hot. Um, and that's at 380 Celsius. It does go up to 480. And again, you'll see it's about to blink. It's going to climb. And it's hot. Like, it's that fast. So I'm super impressed with the speed and what you get out of this thing um, it's kind of a low-end looking station um, but it gets the job done and it gets it done very well and very quickly um, it does come with a sponge I haven't wetted it yet um, the only thing I wish it would have had that it doesn't is like one of the little um, steel wool things where you can just you know, you know wipe your tip off the sponge will work too but the steel wool would last longer um, but other than that super happy with this purchase and I just wanted to go ahead and share it with you guys um, no affiliate or sponsor or anything, um, but I'm still going to post a link down in the description because I'm really happy with it, and maybe you need a solution like this too. Also, it's got the helping hands built in. Move them to any configuration. They are a little, the little springy guys, little gator clips. I'm not in love with them. They're kind of have a lot of tension on them. So if you're over here working one hand on a delicate wire, it's a little difficult. Um, but other than that, really in love with this soldering station. I just want to share it with you guys. Also, real quick, as far as the fans go, um, this one, the hot end cooler, I did end up just wiring in as a always on. It's always on pins on the 1.3. The 1.4 board does have separate pin set for that. And there are ways to go in through the firmware and change it um, using your second hot end uh, heater plug. Um, and you can just reassign the pins so you can control it. Um, quite frankly, if I'm going to be using it, it needs to be on. So I don't mind just having it turned on. Um, I very rarely leave the printer sitting in standby, so I'm not super worried about that. You can see it's moving a lot of air. Um, it's mostly the vibration of the printer, but you can see the water is trickling a little bit on its own. Um, and that's just with the hot end fan. 
These are not spinning at all. Not spinning at all. Um, and you'll see here, when I turn on the part cooling fan, you'll actually see two very distinct jets of air moving in the water, aimed right around the nozzle. So I'm actually really impressed with that. This is probably the best part cooling configuration I've had to date. Um, don't mind the under extrusion on the hot end uh, cooling fan shroud. Um, this is my first ABS print that was actually successful. Um, so there's also a tiny bit of warping on the bottom. Um, I don't have an enclosure on my other printer yet, so this is as good as it's going to get until I do. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and show you that this configuration does work very well. But I'll post a link in the description for both the carriage and the park, the fan shroud, um, as well as uh, any other modifications I've made. Alrighty, I just added these standoffs right here. Uh, to get the bed high enough because it was straining getting up to the highest points on the lead screw and the rails um, You can see I have remounted my Z end stop. I just got done I cleaned the glass and I just got done re-leveling the bed I'm gonna put the clips back on and I'm gonna go ahead and get a test print loaded again a little bit later on We will attack that wire management up here a little bit of a nest, but this won't affect anything while it's printing right now It's just ideal to tuck it away before you you know use it long term snip off these uh, uh, zip ties I just got done um, I had to retension the belt a little bit it was skewing um, a little bit sideways it had uh, from side to side about a two millimeter uh, difference from front to back um, so I just had to do that because it was torquing on this bar so I retorque uh, retention the belts to where the bar is nice and straight and it's within half a millimeter from side to side and I'm okay with a half millimeter tolerance over 330 millimeters. So uh, we're gonna go ahead now, like I said, and get started with the test print, and I'll show you that when it's done. All right, we got a successful Benji. Does look like I may have to adjust the cooling fan a little bit. Got a little bit of uh, not greatness. Definitely could tell where the overhangs are. Um, this is with a .6 nozzle. Um, so we'll go ahead and check the speeds and the cooling stuff. Alright, there you have it. Now I have linear rails on X and Y, direct drive, Bontech clone, V6 all metal hot end with a volcano uh, heat block. I have dual 4010 blowers, a 4010 uh, hot end fan. I have a custom designed spool mount now that keeps the spool up top instead of me having to fiddle on the spot side and have to worry about feeding it all the way up to the top. I have adjusted the cable chain to where it doesn't drag on the pulleys, and so far I've replaced uh, four out of the eight, uh, actually six out of the eight uh, pulleys on this with metal pulleys. Um, and right now I am dialing it in because um, I have to adjust my extrusion and get the part cooling dial just in. Um, but overall, pretty happy with the progress. Um, it's pretty quiet, except there is something rattling. I'm going to have to go and tighten the screw. I think there's like a screw loose in the rail or something that's rattling. Um, but other than that, so far it seems to be working very well. And I'll keep you guys updated in the future with this build. Hope you enjoyed and let me know your comments. Like, share, and subscribe. And I uh, look forward to uh, seeing what you have to say about it.